Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today's watercolor, well, semi-watercolor, it's a little mixed, it has some gouache in it. Um, abstract landscape, we're having fun, just moving color around, splattering color, using different paint brushes. We're using a liner brush for this wonderful little scribble line, like twigs, etc. Um, yeah, I'm painting in a simple wash sky. I go over this step by step. Um, really, any skill level can do this. Just kind of play around with watercolor. That's all it is, is playing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Really, it's just so much fun to use watercolor either wet or really thick. So let's go check it out. All right, we're gonna be painting on, um, this is the Fabiana Artistico 100% Cotton Cold Pressed Paper. It's a bright white. Um, I'll be going with my brushes as I use them. Kind of, this is like an intuitive type style abstract loose painting. Uh, I'll be grabbing just a pencil here there's no trace there's nothing for this you're just going to play around with where you want your eyesight of the horizon line to be i'm thinking mine will be kind of like up here and i'm just going to draw like a land kind of going down here just wiggling in the lines as you see it's like i said abstract right that's the land blah 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 and we're going to be using watercolor kind of concentrated which means like right out of the tube butter and we're going to be using it really loose. We're going to paint a loose sky. We're going to paint some loose ground here. Maybe drip some of the colors down and then splatter in the watercolor to make this really kind of cool, look like the, the flower is exploding, you know, so it's kind of semi-abstract. Um, so I'm going to grab my Princeton no, um, number 16 round uh, Neptune series. I'm going to make a nice sky color. I'm going to grab ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. It's like a bluish gray. I don't want it super bright. Now you can paint your you can paint the the sky area wet first and then wash in the color or wet on dry. I always find people feel like it's much easier to do wet on wet. So let's just take a flat wash brush. And just put some water where your sky is going to be. Just in that area. In my workshops and my retreats, I go over both techniques so that you can find out what your strength is, wet on wet or wet on dry. And here I'm mixing the blue again. You want a fair amount of this color mixed up with your sky. I kind of tilt the paper like this and do like a little sweeping motion and get it really wet. I'm going to dip my brush back into the water and just kind of go in here like this. Leave some space for some clouds and dip again. If you want a little darker, add some more of that burnt sienna, get a little deeper. Ooh, cloudy. Kind of happening there. It's all the happy accidents that happen when you're kind of just playing with color here. And the drippy drip here will stop and I'll just kind of lift it up with my brush. It's really just a really quick movement when you're doing the sky. Just like that. I don't want to fuss too much more. Maybe that center, I'm going to have this bleed down a little more. Just a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna add a little swipe in here. It felt like I needed it. Then I say, brush this down, right? Leave it alone. <laughs> I like the way this guy came out, except this little corner here. I'm just gonna fix that. If I can, I might have messed it up, but I'll lift it this way and move it this way, and I think I'll be all right. Okay, that's my sky. And you're gonna play around with your sky. Move this over here. You're gonna tilt it, move it, move it around, have fun with it. I'll remove the colors that I just mixed yeah. really quickly. And we'll play some ground area. Now that the greens could be any kind of green you want, bright, light. Um, I'm gonna grab my cabin yellow deep and a little bit of the Prussian blue. So it's very bright. 
chartreuse green i might add a little bit of brown to it more of an olive touch when you add the brown so this is burnt umber just tapping in make any color you want and just going wet on dry on the paper here going across where the land would be this bright color now i'm not going to paint this whole entire picture i'm going to take this color move over here and just like this I'm going to concentrate on grabbing some more Prussian blue and some burnt umber. Kind of play with putting that color here and letting it trip down here. I'm going to have to kind of really put some clean water down here so it kind of drips down here. I'm not going to paint all of this. See how it just beads right here? It stops where there's no water to make it flow. If you add the water, it will flow. You see that? So now I'm going to go back in with my green. You know, whatever colors you want to do. I'm going to tilt this, move this, play around with this, moving downward. Having that green kind of just go down a little bit. Tilt, tilt, tilt. Gonna grab some water, play with moving this one. Oh, I had brown on there, so oh, that's okay. I'm gonna just lift up some of that. I want this really kind of expressionistic kind of landscape. Gonna go back in, and add some more yellow, and even get some dry brushing. See the energy that I'm kind of pulling here? really kind of wanted to make it really unique. I'm going to clean off my brush, just kind of push this paint around a little bit. It's so much fun to play like this. You know, not all the landscapes have to be this perfect scenario of color and shape and form. You can have some expression with it. Moving the paint around again. And I'm concentrating that darker color. I'm going to go back in, get a little thicker with my color, the same color as I did, the Prussian blue, burnt sienna, I'm sorry, burnt umber, and yellow. Get a little more blue in here. Thicker. More blue, more blue, blue, blue. I got a little green dot up here. Didn't mean for that to happen, but that's okay. Now it's thicker, so it's not going to move as much really kind of intense right there, right? If I made it really loose, it would move. You can put like a little trees up in here, kind of still wet here. It can be like a fuzzy tree if you just tapped up here. Now it's a big puddle here. Gonna let it, let it sit for a bit. This will take time to actually dry. I'm gonna kind of soap, lift up some of this color because it's very wet. And maybe I'll play with taking some of this color here and going across the plane. You know, again, play with your paint. I'm grabbing more blue. Uh, maybe I'll grab some peacock blue at this point. A little turquoise happening. Just that little swift motion going like this. Adds a little more energy to your picture. Gonna loosen it up. Tap it on the paper towel. I'm still using a 16, by the way. Oh, I gotta clean up my brush again. Add some water. So I kind of faded that little line. So you see that kind of energy happening there? I do wanna kind of leave it there. I just want that part to dry. And now you can start to play with splattering in some color, but I suggest maybe waiting until it dries. A little wet spot there. Cleaning up my mess here to get ready for my fun. So was that a simple sky, a simple kind of ground here? Still kind of seeping in the paper if you wanted to play with grabbing a credit card and scraping. If you wanted to add more deeper color here, a little thicker, you could do that. I feel like this got a little wet, so I might add a little bit thick color again. 
just tapping in a little bit scooping down here cleaning off my brush just want some simple streaks going down you can make some grasses you can even still use this brush or a skinnier brush I might grab a liner brush and take those greens and just start making these wild grasses kind of going like this this liner brush is fun 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 you can start to see the energy I'm pulling here right with the grass get more brown in there try playing with a liner brush if you have never tried playing with the liner brush they're so much fun and I may grab some of that bright yellow chartreuse kind of color green etc this is where you're having fun just taking this brush makes these great little grasses it's perfect for tree branches for grasses all kinds of stuff okay I'll let that sit for a bit I do want to make like a little blue purplish kind of color kind of mountain back here so I'll grab my ultramarine blue maybe a little bit of bright rose or whatever pink you have here making like a purple color it's a little too wet so I'm gonna tap a paper towel and there's my little mountain back here just a simple because I drew the pencil line in there and I want to keep that They're kind of pretty huh just a simple little blue mountain you can make it a little bit darker if you want I'm gonna go up a little bit more up here there fun 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 so everything's still super wet um, I'm gonna grab another brush a smaller brush number 12 loosen up some lovely this is the cadmium red light. Now, we can start to splatter, but don't get the sky. So you need to grab like a piece of paper. I'm just gonna grab an old piece of paper here. And I will cover it. So you're not splattering the sky. It's kind of curling on me, so I'm gonna have to fold a little bit. There. I don't want the sky and I don't want the mound to get it. Not cooperating. There we go. Uh, if I loosen up this color, so it will kind of dissipate in the green. Get a little thicker. You can barely see it, right? We want that kind of like dissipated color. And then we're going to go back over when it dries with some. Oh, just big color. Now here's the bright rose, just a lovely color. Now one little trick is that you could mix it with white gouache. Technically, it's not a super super um, watercolor, but it's a lot more fun. So I've grabbed some white gouache, and I have to use a stiffer brush to grab my gouache because it's very stiff on my tube normally it would come out softer than this now you see how you mix that and it's a light pink I'm gonna grab some more water you've turned your watercolor into a gouache <laughs> a little trick so here we go splattering that you could have actually, um, if you knew you were going to put flowers here, you could have put um, masking fluid down. Just this section here, getting really kind of wet with gouache. Bigger splatters. Now you can see that, All right? We're gonna let that dry for a bit and come back. So now I dried it. It's kind of like, did because it was very wet, when it dried, it kind of blended, kind of funky. So now I'm gonna go back in with my number 10. 
with the actual red, cadmium red light by itself, thick right out of the tube. And see, now you can just go right on top of it when it's dry. You can tap it, you can see it much better. See that? Going on those little kind of muted ones. Just tippy tap. Some bright red color out here. This is just watercolor right out of the tube. Look how cool that is. Right? Obviously back here we teeny tiny ones. And we're gonna add some grasses in between. I always feel like it's better to put the color in. Now see how it's like red sitting right on top of that dark, dark green. You didn't think you could do that, but you can. Now I'm pushing it down. I'm gonna add some of this lovely pink too. Why not put all the colors in? Um, I had that light, okay, the rose, right, mixed in. So turn pink with that gouache. Just tapping the color. We didn't do yellow, but we could add yellow. It's slightly mixed media when you're using the gouache, but it's kind of cool, right? Now most people here who have watercolor have gouache. So you can do mixed media instead of going out and buying a whole bunch of gouache. You can see that now, right? If you add the gouache, it's gonna get lighter. See that? All these light, little, lovely little, beautiful marks. And you can use the gouache to make wonderful, I'm gonna loosen this up. It's really just so heavy. Um, to make some daisies. I'm gonna put little daisies in there. Mine's a little too thick, but you know, you see, you get the point. I think that's a little too thick for my daisy. I would use a smaller brush. Uh, I would grab, I'd actually use a small brush. I know. <laughs> I have a number four. I barely, barely use them, but if you want to make the daisy petals correct, you do that. Get some daisies in there, and I'm going to pop in some yellow. Just pop in. like that and you can splatter some of the white too so it look, doesn't look so like you just plopped it there so I'll grab some lovely white splatter that a little bit right and yellow will look great I'm just gonna put all the colors in today my yellow has a little too much green in there but it'll work Again, you have to cover this part if you don't want it up here. Some little wildflower field happening. Oops, sorry. Right? Um, when you finish the daisies, you can put like a yellow right on top of the daisy. Grab some thick yellow. It's really kind of wet right now, but when it dries, you know what I'm saying? And then go back and use the lovely liner brush for grasses. I'm just gonna clean up some of this red stuff here. Mm. So, get my nail deep, brush in blue. If you want it darker, again, brush in blue, burnt sienna, or Burnt umber, making mine a little bit darker. Grabbing the different colors here. Again, the grass can kind of go up and over where you see here, kind of peeking through. Out this way, kind of coming up over here. So you're in the thick of it in here, kind of go up bend it. Do you see it up there? And of course down below. 
connect some of the stems to the flowers. You can make some areas darker, lighter, all that good stuff. You might want to wait till some of the flowers, kind of the colors dry, if it gets a little muddy and messy. Again, I'm gonna go in here and make these little, little grasses that connect to the plants. See that? Let me zoom in so you can see. All those lovely grasses kind of connecting. Oops, some of them are bleeding into the other color. I don't know if I like necessarily, that's why I'm saying wait till it dries. But you understand what I'm doing here. A lot of energy with that liner brush. It's a lot of fun. And same thing goes true for a lighter color. Grabbing yellow, almost right out of the tube. Green, mixing in some of that chartreuse kind of color. Voila. Really quick, easy, fun, um, beautiful landscape. I'm going to go and add some bright green grasses over here. A lot of fun. Doesn't always have to be a serious landscape. Um, have fun playing with it. Add different grasses. I love to do this kind of technique. See if it bleeds a little bit there. You might want to just remove it, but. Wait till the colors dry and then go back in and play with the grasses. So, have fun painting. Doesn't always have to be a serious landscape. You can have different colors in here. You could add purples in there. I didn't. I can. You can go go to town. You know what I mean with all the colors that you have here. Um, play around with it. You know. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned something today and I hope you experiment more. It's all about experimenting, having fun and. Don't take yourself so seriously when you're painting watercolor. Try these different techniques for wonderful landscapes. Just different, a lot of it, different type of energy to it. it. Has a very kind of wild energy. All right, take care. And don't forget, if you're a Patreon member, you get the extended version, so stick around. And if you wanna be a Patreon member, click the link in my description box below. Become a Patreon member. We have a lot of extra stuff on there. And it's where people support my channel here on YouTube, which is a free channel. So I thank you so much for stopping by. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.